Good evening, members of Spiritual Equipped Encounters on Facebook, and those who are viewing me on YouTube. And for those that follow my short reels on TikTok under APCS, how's everybody doing this evening? I hope everybody is doing great. Uh, as for me, I'm hanging in there. Uh, still continue to do my workouts. Uh, been working just on basically the old videos that I have that I've collected throughout the, the times of my investigations. So I'm going back into some of those videos because sometimes what happens, brother and sisters, how are you doing, brother Eric? Sometimes what happens uh, when you debunk a video, you, you might miss out on something. So I've been going back into some of the videos and some of the things that I've missed, I've been taking screenshots and I've been placing them on... Uh, on spiritual cryptid encounters and other groups that I'm affiliated with. Uh, just want to say a thank you to those groups that allow me uh, to place the the videos out there on in their groups. I really appreciate it. How are you doing, Sister Erica? You know, uh, I just want to talk about how I balance myself uh, of what I've experienced throughout my life to who I am right now. You know, and you know, uh, through through our life, we go through through ups and downs. It's kind of like a roller coaster ride. You know, you go through ups and downs, ups and downs, and sometimes you always say to yourself, "When are the things that I'm going through going to stop?" You know, uh, which it could be some some things could be minute, could be minor minor things, and then some things could be big things. You know, uh, for example, like me, you know, I'm a I'm a, a veteran. Uh, I went. I was. I was in a battle of Medina Ridge in Operation Desert Storm. So, the basic, basically, the way as I've gone old, uh, grown older, and gained wisdom and knowledge, is is like I, I. The way I balance myself out, brothers and sisters, is I never forget uh, what I've been through. First of all, uh, you know, have you ever heard the saying? Uh, it's not how many times you fall, but how many times you get up. Well, I've been there. You know, I've been there uh, through ups and downs, whether throughout my life when I was a teenager, when I was in the military, and then when I had that uh, the spiritual battle there in uh, Elms Grove in Colleen, Texas. You know, uh, one thing is I've always found a way. You know, where there's a, they say just saying where there's a will, there's a way. Well, I've always found a way to overcome any obstacles that get in my way. You know, I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I always find a way to overcome whatever I'm going through and wish I remember what I go through. That's for anybody that's gone through something. You remember what you go through, right? So when you give somebody advice, it's because of what you've experienced and you tell them exactly what to do, to do to overcome the scenario that might be going through. Uh, never, never forget where you, uh, who you are, where you've been, what you've been through, what you've done, because that's part of you. Uh, at the same time, like I said before, what is it that you do to over, overcome the situations you've been through? You know. Uh, so I've been through a lot of situations. Uh, was 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 kept me, should I say, humble. Is my faith in God, you know, uh, in Jesus Christ, my faith. That is the strongest, the strongest that I have, uh, strongest power that I have, is maintaining my faith and believing the Heavenly Father, no matter what gets gets thrown my way. At the same time, I find out. That through the faith and, and belief in Jesus Christ, that the the foundation I had had openings of which the opening that I had was unforgiveness, in which I forgave uh, individuals of my past that I might have had some hatred, some anger, vengeance towards them. You know, when you're too busy living life and and, and things obstacles come your way you don't know where they're coming from well i found out the source of my trials and tribulations 
was coming from unforgiveness. Um, once I forgave those individuals truthfully, uh, I was set free from the bondage of unforgiveness. I was set free from any negative ties or openings of the unforgiveness I had. I got set free from that. Those ties got cut because what I mean by that is any spiritual opening that this unseen forces had that were using against me got cut. In which what happened is when I forgave and the forgiveness is part of love, the Heavenly Father blessed me for showing uh, forgiveness. So he blessed me through the spiritual gifts of discernment in which that's what I use now to fight the spiritual unseen war that's around us. That's how I'm able to get the pictures that I, that, that I get through my live feeds because those are the unseen things that are around us uh, that, how should I say, show themselves, but they're on the hunt, right? They're in the hunt because they see me as a spiritual threat because they know that I have forgiveness. And they know I'm on Tenet Love Foundation. They know I have a personal relationship with the Heavenly Father, so with Jesus Christ. So they come at me, try to come at me, but... As I'm spiritually blessed by the, by, by the Heavenly Father, I'm being protected by the Heavenly Father. Uh, so a lot of the footage that I get is because I am, just like I was in the front lines in combat, in the flesh, as a soldier, in Operation Desert Stormball, you could say I'm in the front line spiritually. Uh, that's why in my pictures and videos i'm able to capture things moving within the short reels and if, if you notice most of these things they have a grotesque look or beastly look to them uh that's part of the balance you know this the disembodied demonic nephilim i call them ddns you know, some people might call them demons but they're all affiliated with skinwalkers with uh shapeshifters uh, with anything out of sorcery, necromancy, they're all affiliated, in which they have those abilities to be able to shape, manifest into into whatever. But as as you maintain the Love Foundation to protect you, uh, with the Love Foundation, since there's there's forgiveness, you're probably forgiven, or and or vice versa. There's no spiritual openings for them to try to to bond you. Uh, they can come at you in numbers to try to find a way in, uh, which sometimes uh, it leads you to be kind of weak because it, uh, they drain your energy, especially when they come in numbers. Uh, like on my photos and in videos, you could see that there's many. You know, it's not that I'm looking for them. It's that it happens, you know. I'm just going out there to make a live video. I noticed them a long time ago when, like I said, when I didn't know that I had unforgiveness in my heart. Uh, to when it just went out of control and I was being, they were trying to bond me. They were trying to bond my, my instincts, my, my, my way of thinking. Uh, they was trying to keep me bonded from, to be able to break free, uh, to call for help to the Heavenly Father, Father, right? In which I did. And I would always pray to God, show me what I have to do, Heavenly Father. Show me, show me the way. But when they try to bond you, you know, it's kind of like you're, you're like drowning and you get, uh, get, uh, getting your last breath of air. It's like you can't think straight when they're targeting you, uh, in which there's a lot of manifestations where whether you hear a disembodied voice, whether you're seeing shadow people, whether you're seeing something that looks in a beastly form, you know, they, they do those things uh, to... To hook the hooks deeper on you because they want you to believe they want you to have fear uh, that's what they do that if they get get you to believe and then, then get you to fear they'll have a stronger hold over you in which uh, it's not just attacking you but it's also entering your your foundation your home right uh, that's how they 
to enter your home through you. Uh, but I know that I will pray to the Heavenly Father uh, to show me the way, to show me, if He could give me, like I said, I was being so spiritually attacked back in like in 2000 and for many years, you know, I was being spiritually attacked so much that a lot of my family didn't want to associate with me because they didn't know, they really didn't know what was going with me, but they thought I wasn't all up there, right? But because they didn't, I didn't want to, to bring the danger that was happening to me, I didn't want to take that to my loved ones, even though that they might have not understood what I was going through. I didn't want to bring what I was going through to anybody. So I kept that whatever was happening to me was a thing that was going to happen to me, that I was, I was going to have to find a way to overcome the unseen enemy in which, thank God, I did. You know, uh, when I forgave, I have become a whole different person through forgiveness uh, that the, the spiritual gifts of discernment are there. Uh, I've been tested numerous times afterwards, and it's like the things that maybe I couldn't, uh, how should I say, overcome when I was in, this, in the midst of the battle, when I was being engulfed by the negativity. Now, if somebody comes to me a certain way, it, it, I'm able to... Uh, Take care of it immediately without even doing nothing. Uh, the only thing I do is irradiate my lo my love that's within me brighter. You know, uh, I guess I used to be like a like a star that that seemed like uh, it was fixing to give out, but my, right now I'm a shining star, a a nova, a supernova that is just bright and no matter. Uh, what comes up against me spiritually, I'm able to overcome it spiritually now real easily. Uh, it's amazing, brothers and sisters, you know, uh, when you're able to overcome something because you're doing the right thing. You know, it's kind of like playing checkers or playing chess. You know, you're trying to find a way to win. You know, uh, spiritually, you know, I found a way to win and and that's why I share what I share here on Spiritual Encrypted Encounters. You know, I share a little bit of everything. Uh, how you doing, Sister Veronica Merdano? I share a little bit of everything. I talk about a love foundation. I talk about, talk about forgiveness. That's very important. Uh, I talk about how, how to, to go on the offensive, to go on the defensive, how to overcome uh, and then negative attachments, you know, uh, and, and through that, you know, I also share pictures and videos so people could see, you know, for those who have the spiritual eye, to be able to see what's within the pictures. You know, some people might say there's nothing there, but then there's many other people that say they see what's within the picture. They'll send me exactly what, I, what I'm seeing. They'll send it uh, with a circle or they crop it real close because they're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. But that's what I see right now within within our world, there's a lot of people that are bonded that they're 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 not able to use their spiritual gifts, which is the ability to see, to hear, to sense spiritually, because somewhere uh, within their lives is being blocked. It's being spiritually blocked by these unseen forces. Uh, and that's why I talk about forgiveness, a love foundation, not to not to go to sleep mad, uh, not to anger. Uh, if somebody comes at you in a negative way, don't don't look at it at, at the person like it's the person trying to hurt your feelings, but see it as it could be the unseen force that can jump into an individual to come up against you just to see if it can find an opening. Because this has happened to me. Numerous uh, times in my lifetime, you know, I've seen it happen when I was growing up as a kid. I've seen it happen while I was in the military. After the military, I've seen it uh, through, I guess, failed relationships uh, in the past. 
But once I identified the problem, then I know that it's not really the individual. Uh, it's just that he can use anybody that ha might have a spiritual opening. So uh, that's what I see now. So instead of saying something bad to somebody, I'd rather say, God bless you. I love you, brothers and sisters. You know, say something positive. Uh, that's the key. Uh, I remember one. Uh, there was numerous times. I, I'm going to share a story with you. <laughs> Y'all know I like sharing stories. There was a cousin of mine that uh, that he said he was going to go out, right? So we went out to a dance, and uh, that day I wasn't feeling too well. I was feeling a little bit sick. I had a cold. So later on that night, like around 2.30, He's uh, uh, here, a car pull up, and it's, I guess somebody's dropping him off. So I said, drop him off. I said, hey, I said, I just opened the door because he didn't have a key, you know. So I opened the door, and I'm standing there, and he's looking at me. And he started walking towards me, right? As he's walking towards me, he starts acting differently. Like, within his eyes, I could see, like, yellowish. And he's looking at me, like, as he's coming towards me, he's, like, approaching me like a like a tiger or a lion or a lion would approach its the prey you know and he's just walk, uh, he's walking towards me he pulls out a knife and he's got a knife in his hand so i see this and spiritually i can sense that something ain't right so i say hey cousin with love how you doing and all of a sudden he's, he's normal you know and he's got the knife in his hand it's like hey cuz what's what's up Next thing you know, whatever was there, entered him again. So he starts coming at me with a knife in the sand, and he's looking at me very weird. And then uh, as soon as he's getting uh, like a couple of feet away from me, I say, hey, cousin, I love you, and God bless you. Once I said that, that unseen force that was within him took off. And my son, be, uh, my, my uh, cousin became normal when he became normal he's like he looked at his hand and he's seen the knife he didn't even know he had it in his hand he he closed it up and put it in his pocket uh that's why i always say not to be angry at anybody because sometimes people might have the spiritual thing could be something minor you know if you went up to the club whether he was drinking that could have been a spiritual opening you know some people that are on the bad road that are doing drugs that could be a spiritual opening for the the vessel or the, the body, right, to be spiritually attacked. Uh, that's what they do. Uh, I've seen it happen uh, numerous times throughout my life, brothers and sisters, uh, how it affects people. It can affect good people, but if they have an opening, it affects them that way. How you doing, brother, uh, brother Mark Bridges? Um, I'm talking about this right now. It's kind of like, uh, I guess one of my friends, Mark Anthony, uh, I mean, uh, Michael Anthony, he was uh, posting what was going on with the president and all this. You know, the only thing I can say is prayers to him, you know, by him. When you place yourself out there in a, in a high pedestal, you know, things like that. When people, you know, have you ever heard that the term, uh, the nest, the nest of snakes, right? Well, it's a, or the term, it's a doggy dog world. Well, the only thing I can do is keep, keep him in prayer for whatever he's going through. But if God is with him, right? If Jesus Christ is with uh, number 45, then he has nothing to worry about, right? Because if number 40, uh, if Jesus is with him, he's going to prevail through Jesus Christ. Just like, Jesus Christ helped me pre uh, prevail from my trials and tribulations of what happened to me in Elms Grove and throughout my life, you know. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Imagine this. Somebody that's coming up against you spiritually, right? Or like when I go to the woods and when I go to the woods, you know, I, I see the comments when people put, they don't understand how hot and heavy it is when I'm out there by myself. As soon as I get there uh, into the path or I'm walking the path, movement starts, is, is acting up. It's right off the bat. There's movement. 
it's like a magnetic presence where all my hair stand up and right there that's my spiritual senses letting me know there's danger around me so as i'm there and i'm trying to make my video then i start hearing uh, disembodied voices sometimes they talk spanish sometimes they talk english and sometimes they talk what seems to be latin or an, an unknown language that i don't understand what they're saying uh, when that's happening i start hearing more movement around me you know on, all around me you hear movement within the woods uh then sometimes you hear noises like for example growlings or you hear uh like some kind of animal sound that make with their snout you know uh sometimes that happens there's times that i hear uh chimes a whistle like some a, a person whistling like whistling, like a mimicking a person whistling. Uh, so many different things that happen when I'm out there in an investigation. The the people don't don't realize that when I go out there, I'm placing myself on the line spiritually just to get evidence to awaken my brothers and sisters. I'm trying to awaken my, my, everybody that's here in spiritually encrypted encounters. I know there's some. There's a lot of y'all that are spiritually gifted. That's why you're here. And I'm just trying to awaken those. Well, that's why I go to other groups. I'm trying to awaken those spiritually that there is this unseen forces that are around us. They'll deceive you because they're tricksters. Uh, they, they'll manifest into something that's with it, that you're thinking within your mind. If you're thinking about a Bigfoot, a dogman, a leprechaun, <laughs> a mermaid, a, a, an elf, a gnome, a, a, a fairy, a pixie is going to manifest into that because he knows what you're thinking. Uh, it's not that, it, it, that they're mind readers, they know your spirit. But with the spiritual gifts of discernment, then we're able to know their spirit. Uh, that's why I say the forgiveness is very important for your love to become even greater. Uh, but yes, there's a lot of activity that happens, and I wouldn't take somebody out there with me if they're not ready to be out there. You know, uh, when I go out there, uh, I uh, prepare myself spiritually before, during, and after. Uh, it's been a month since I've been back out there, because last time I went out there, it was pretty hot and heavy. Uh, my energy got drained, got zapped. So it took me... About a month to recuperate. I'm, I'm doing a lot better right now. And still things uh, are not... I'm still... I'm doing better, but I still need to do more better. You know, uh, which... You know, I think it's just... I'm just going to take... I'm going to take more time from uh, going out there doing anything else no, anymore. I'm just going to work with what I have right now, for right now. Uh, sister... Uh, Brother Herschel remembers uh, in Elms Grove. He was... Matter of fact, I think he's the only person that I've, there was two people, but Herschel, Herschel and his wife Priscilla were, they, they contacted me if I could show them Elms Grove and I took them there uh, one day and they witnessed it for themselves. Uh, I took them, took them during the day and I left them on the trail. When they came out, out of the trail, they said that they heard something and they got on their knee just so, so they wouldn't move. And they could literally hear uh, something running around them, the footsteps that happened there that I would hear when I would go down that path. Uh, they, they could not just hear that, but they could feel the energy that was there. And it's not a good feeling in the path in Elms Grove because uh, I know that uh, uh, Brother Herschel and Priscilla are, are, gift, are, are spiritually gifted and they could sense what's there. And that was during the day. Uh, and nighttime uh, is a lot worse. That's when the energy really picks up. And 10 o'clock, on, on up, once it gets dark, activity picks up right off the bat in, in that location. Uh, in which those shadow figures that I talk about, they do come out, out of the wall line at nighttime. You can see them moving around in the park, at the park, like at the swing set. The, the slides, there's light, light poles out there. 
and you could see them moving around in the park, you know, and it'll be a lot of them. There was numerous times that I would see them out there, like around one, two. At first, I thought it was children playing tag or hiding go seek, right? So I could see them moving, and as I was nearing them, as I was walking towards them, they were running to the woods. And I would tell them, hey, kids, you know, that's when I didn't know I hadn't... I didn't know what was there at the time, you know, I was like, hey, y'all need to come out there, y'all need to go to your home, you know, it's late, too late to be out here, you, there could be a wild animal, you know, so I'll go home, the next thing you know, they come out of the woods, and I'm seeing them through my sliding door, you know, because where I lived in that park, I had the the view to the park, I could see everything, so I could see them running around again out there, I said, man, these this kids don't want to listen, you know, so I'll go out there again, and by the time I get near them, they're running to the woods. <laughs> but it was the shadow spirits or unclean spirits because they're black, you know, in shadow form. They were they were there, you know, they were surface up. And at first I would see them like, may, I would say like teenagers because that's how tall they looked. But then uh, when I started going through what I was going through, they became even bigger. You know, they, they, they turned out to be like seven eight nine foot tall um uh, my sister witnessed it that way uh in the house when uh she said there was one evening that she see somebody pass by the hallway and then she seen it looking from on top the highest uh level of the door she sees somebody looking down like this at her you know <laughs> but that's that's how big they are the police have witnessed them there in that location, but they never they never filed a report. Uh, the reason they said they they were chasing around the shadow figures with a beam light the beam light from the for the patrol car. There were several patrol cars hitting it with the beams, and you could only see a shadow within the beam, you know, moving around real fast. Uh, then there was two guys that were blocking the main road. The, 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 the way they were there uh, at that park is because there was a phone call of a woman that said that there was a peeping Tom uh, looking into her bathroom. But what was weird about the, the, that her bathroom, the, the, the window was very high, that the peeping Tom would have to be very tall, like probably like 16 to 17, 18 possibly tall to be able to see from that high window, but she said there was somebody looking through a window. So that's where the cops showed up and they were ch chasing around this, the shadow where they were beaming it and there was something moving. It was just going moving real fast back and forth. There was like six qu squat cars chasing it, you know, and finally it passed in front of the car, a police car that was blocking the road through the headlights and it passed right in front of them and the police looked at each other they were like did you just see that and they're like yeah they said we could gotta keep it to ourselves because if we tell the chief of police what we just saw we're gonna think we're crazy and we're gonna lose our jobs so they never filed a report of what happened there in elms grove you know it's, it's things like that brothers and sisters that set me on this journey, you know, of what I've experienced, what I've been through throughout all my life to do the things that I do now, you know, uh, that's why I'm making this video right now. Just wanted to, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of likes on, on the photos and I really appreciate, uh, I'm trying to get the group to grow. So if y'all got any friends that you want to invite to spiritual encrypted encounters, send them, send them this way. Now I'm trying to get spiritually crown uh, group to grow and the Facebook, uh, I mean the YouTube spiritually encrypted and crown to grow also. So if you haven't subscribed to spiritual encrypted encounters on YouTube, please subscribe. I'm trying to get up there in viewership. Hopefully one day I'll make the a thousand marker, you know, uh, so I can go live there. Honestly, I really like doing the lives this way. Uh, you know, I think, you know, for those that have the, the other platform where they bring guests in and stuff, you know, maybe I'll do something like that. I'm not sure yet, you know, uh, but for right now, I just, I like sharing, uh, my wisdom and knowledge to the viewers because, uh, we can relate to one thing that 
you know, th yeah, there's love in this world, but there's also hatred. You know, there's the yin and the yang. There's there's good, there's bad. Uh, we've somewhere within our lives, we've all felt both. But which is the one that makes you feel better? Is the question. You know, when I was in the military, I had to be a certain way. Uh, in which, when you place yourself, your life on the line, and your job is to be in the front lines as a tanker. You know, I had to be a certain way in which love wasn't in the equation, even though I believed in God, love is, was kind of closed up on me, that I had to be hardcore in which uh, I had to teach tough love to the soldiers so they would be able to survive, right, in a combat environment. Now, now that I'm not in the military, that's when... I would not, when I felt love was when my son was born. When my son was born, it was a good feeling, you know, uh, having a son, you know, and that's when my love started getting stronger. And then uh, when I forgave, when I was going through what I was going through in Elms Grove, my love just became that much stronger. And after that is, I found somebody to be my partner, you know, which is my wife now, I found love there in which she became even greater, you know, uh, and she knows of the works that I do, and she allows me to do this live feeds and, and, and this works that I do, uh, which that's a blessing, you know, that, that I have my darling that understands what I'm trying to do. And that's a good feeling. I know activity has been picking up. There's been a lot of activity happening. Like uh, what's happening to me right now is not really me here within my house because my house is, you could say, protected because I have minerals and stuff like this to protect the home. It's like my vehicles are the ones that are, are kind of getting hit hard right now. I have one vehicle in the shop where... There's not something wrong with it. It's, it's not working. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have an engine or transmission problem. It's got to be something else where all the lights just light up. So they're trying to figure out what the problem with that one is. Then my, my other car, uh, where the one that I take to the investigations, its battery is getting drained. <laughs> you know, I, I check the lights to make sure I got nothing on. But the energy is getting drained off the battery. You know, what can cause something that, like that to happen? We know. These unseen forces, they have the abilities, just like they have the ability to try to drain our energy, they can cause mechanical problems to vehicles. They cause accidents, you know. That's what they do. Uh, so, you know, I just, I just pray daily. And I rebuke anything that might ha be happening in this nature in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, that's what that's that's what I do. I'm not gonna give them any kind of power, you know. Like normally that happens, or when things start happening around my home, where I'm hearing things outside my home, like growlings, or hear somebody disembodied voices talking. That's the time that I go out there when I'm spiritual ready. I go because it feels like. There's negative energies that are around. They can't come into my home. They want me to surface up. And as a child of God or messenger of God, right, representing the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, well, I know he's with me. And I'm not afraid to go show my presence, even if it's in, uh, as, a, as an investigation. And what surfaces up, surfaces up. You know, I'm going to catch it on video. Uh, at the same time, I know that Jesus Christ protects me with his angels when that's when I'm out there, you know, I'm not afraid to go into spiritual battle because I know Jesus is with me. You know, there's a lot of people that say they, they freak out with the pictures, how close it is with the short reels, how they're in the back of me sometimes, you know, they get very near, you know, I mean, God, that's what they do. 
how do you think so many people get affected that have spiritual openings? They enter their foundation. If they have spiritual openings of anger, hatred, unforgiveness, they enter the foundation through the front door, the back door of their heart, their, their, the windows they enter in that nature. You know, um, that's how they enter through spiritual openings. That's why I talk about forgiveness, unforgiveness, to forgive. Once you forgive, there can be no hatred, no anger, no fear. And the past is the past and you can move on forward which makes your love stronger and then you're blessed with the spiritual gifts of discernment but yes uh there's some people that ask me how do you do it there's one of the questions uh, that i was asked earlier how do you do it to make a video knowing what's behind you you know when i make the videos i i'm not actually seeing what's behind me but I'm sensing what's behind me. So I angle, if the camera is facing me when I'm making the live video, I angle the camera a certain a certain way where I'm, my senses are, are sensing what's behind me. So I angle it. I believe there's a video, a couple of videos where I point the camera to the front of me and whatever I'm sensing is right there in front of me. Like I would say a hand, a hand uh, like a, arm's length away from me you know that i've actually captured something on video am i seeing it visually no am i sensing it spiritually yes so a lot of the the screenshots that i that i that i have i'm sensing something but it's not showing itself to me uh there was one that showed itself to me and i was trying to record it and we had a stare down literally manifested you could say to look real like in flesh flesh form well it was pretty tall the one it manifested and i had to go back into the video because i i had the camera facing right at it and he was staring at me he had his, his jaw open it was humongous i say that right there when we talk about nephilim that one was tall it was massive. It had to be over 15 foot tall. Because it was as big as, almost as big as a tree. And I could see it. I could visually see it looking at me. And as it was just looking at me. And he had his jaw open. He had his jaw open looking at me. And he wouldn't keep it. It's just looking at me like he was trying to see what I was going to do. He was trying to see if I was going to be afraid of it. Or... To see if I was going to run away. But I was looking right back at it. I never kept my, my eyes off of it. Because I just wanted to see. What was going to happen. What it was going to try to do. How are you doing Sister Gloria? So that day I had a standoff. With this. What I call a DDN. For about a good five to seven minutes. It was in manifestation form. Looking right at me. And I was looking at it. But I was looking up to it. Because it was as tall as a tree. And it was pretty big. The head was real big. It kind of reminded me like those beings from um, the show uh, during the, the pharaohs. That they have that the face, you know, they have some that look like their, their body is human, but they're, they're the, the face of a crocodile. Well, that's how it kind of looked like from the face. It kind of looked like a, like a big, big jaw of a crocodile, but the, the form looked beastly and it was huge and i was like there's no way that's a crocodile but the face the jaw was ma massive had a lot of teeth and it was just had it wide open looking at me so what i did as i, as I was staring uh, you know i started praying and i said i rebuke you rebuke you in the name of jesus christ and when i said that it disappeared and then it re-manifested to the right to another section where it was it was a it wasn't the same one it was a different one and it was looking at me so i said it i said to that one i rebuke you in the name of jesus christ and it disappeared also so just remember you know uh you when you're out there even if you're alone you're not never alone uh the heavenly father is always with you jesus christ is always with you uh the heavenly angels are always with you so just remember you're never by yourself no matter how overwhelming it could be when you place yourself in a situation out there 
or whoever it is, you're never alone. Like right now, I have a, a uh, there's a mineral called, uh, boy, It's a it's a healing. It's dealing with this is a like for healing. Uh, can't remember that. It's like a. It's for healing. This little stone that I have here, a healer. It's a healer. And I also I also carrying this is one I showed uh, last week. I'm carrying this optical calcite with me with a healer, I'm holding both. To be able to make this video without any any spiritual interruptions, uh, spiritual interruptions can happen when you're trying to send a positive message, uh, or when you're trying to help out somebody spiritually through through here. You know, like when you go into prayer, things can happen also. Uh, I witnessed that firsthand in the show I was watching, where there was this girl that she she said she was being spiritually attacked by something she was getting scratches and we started praying for her i was praying from her from my end and next thing you know uh, the light starts flickering on her on her screen my light starts flickering in my room so that's when you know that there, that she was being truthful that something was spiritually attacking her uh, and after a while as we kept on praying uh the negative force or demonic being force manifested in my room trying to show itself to me on my wall so it was as it did that and my lights were flickering i i rebuked it in the name of jesus christ and and that that's when it left uh but yes we have to maintain our love foundation uh, no matter what the manifest to uh, how they speak to you, whether they growl, whether whatever manifestation, we was talking a different language, trying to find a way in to scare you, don't fear it uh, because you got Jesus Christ with you. Uh, don't fear the unseen. We are greater than that. We have uh, the heavenly light within us because we're children of God to be able to overcome any anything negative that comes our way. Just remember, remember that, Sister Gloria Vela. How, uh, how you doing again? Hope everything's uh, good. Are you doing well for that you and your family are are doing well. Uh, it's been a while since the last time we made a, a video. Maybe one day we can do another one, and you know, you you can pick the topic of whatever you want to discuss, and we'll speak about it. Yes, uh, you know, I try to, my best to try to aid uh, as many people as possible. Uh, one of the things that I like to preach, you know, and even when I had positive spiritualists was always maintain a love foundation. That's the key, you know. Always maintain a love foundation no matter what you're going through. Whether it's something physically uh, spiritually, or something that you might be going through in any kind of negative way, you have to maintain your love foundation because through that love foundation, that's how you're going to overcome what you're going through. That's the key. You know, sometimes people tell me, uh, if, if Jesus Christ is it, exists, where is he? Right? And well, I normally tell them, well, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Because it seems like you're worrying about too many things that are happening around the world, but do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Yeah, it's when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ that you're going to be able to understand that He is around us spiritually. He's unseen, right? He's, he's, he'll reveal Himself to you as you continue to grow your relationship with him through faith and belief and he will bless you he'll, t he'll, he'll teach you as you sleep uh, sometimes when I wake up I already know what I'm going to talk about or what he's showing me to talk about and then when I talk about something uh, it means 
is meaning something to somebody that might be going through something. Right now, I would like to. Uh, I want to do something right now because uh, of the things that I've been seeing as of lately. Is a lot of people practicing witchcraft and trying to cast hexes against people that are trying to do good, like me, that I'm trying to do good. So at this time, we're going to pray against people that are trying to cause havoc in people's lives through hexes or whatever they're trying to do. So we're going to pray against them right now. Heavenly Father, at this time, Father, Heavenly Father, at this time, I would like to pray against all the negativity that's trying to come up against me or my brothers and sisters, whether it's coming against us spiritually or somebody that is trying to come up against us in a negative way through through witchcraft or necromancy. Uh, we don't believe in what they they believe in, or we don't believe in the negativity. We tie, bind, rebuke that negativity, any hexes, necromancy, in uh, anything in that kind of way, shape, or form. We tie, bind, and rebuke it in Jesus' name at this time. We deflect anything negative that's trying to come our way uh, with the Love Foundation because we're not allowing any for more negativity to enter our love foundation or safe haven which is our heart and our spirit we are sending it back to the center at this time because it's not welcome within our foundations this i pray in jesus christ's name amen yes brothers and sisters sometimes we have to pray Against what is being shown to us in our dreams when it's shown being something is being shown to us in our dreams Everything will reveal itself to us through with the spiritual gives of discernment. It'll let, know us exactly who's wishing bad upon us and We have to pray against what is being shown to us. So I just prayed Against what was being shown to me Sometimes when you pray against something in that nature, brothers and sisters, listen to me very carefully of what I know spiritually over the years. It'll take seven days, seven days to go back to the sender. On the eighth day, the, the one that try to do harm to you spiritually will come knocking on your door or they'll try to get in contact with you. Or it could be somebody that you hadn't heard in, your, in a long time. But when they get in contact with you, this is what they're going to ask you. <laughs> they're going to ask you, "Are you is everything all right with you? Are you okay? You're not sick? That's the first thing they're going to tell you. Because when you deflect it back to the center, things are going to start happening to them because you did it. You took authority over the negativity and you send it back, right? So the negativity only wants one thing. It wants to whatever it's promised, right? So if it cannot collect what was promised to them, it's going to go back to wherever conjured it up, basically, you know, and it's going to go back to the sender. Uh, and that's what happens. That's one thing that I've witnessed numerous times, time and time again, where when we pray against those negativities, Sometimes it goes to individuals that, that, that wish to bet upon us, brothers and sisters, people that we know, that we trusted, that we consider them friends. Sometimes it goes back to those individuals. And, you know, it's like this. If you're not wishing good good to me, wishing me good thoughts or a, a, a God bless you, well, then if it's something bad that you're wishing towards me, then it goes back to you because I don't accept anything bad. Uh, that's why I made the little prayer right now. It's something I had to do, and I'm gonna let leave it up, uh, leave it up to God or Jesus Christ to handle it. Uh, he's our, our savior. He's our protector, and he handles those that come up against us spiritually. Uh, but besides that, brothers and sisters, uh, 
I was just making the short video to let you know that you're never alone. That God is always with you, just like He's with me. You know, I'm wearing this this cap from Operation Desert Storm when I was in the military. You know, I was trying to trying to talk to y'all how in the military I had to be a certain way. I'm not in the military no more. So uh, the guards that I had up when I was in the military to protect myself because, you know, I wasn't just facing the unseen that we face now. I was also facing a physical threat, which is the enemy that we had to fight in combat. So in that way that I fought the front lines that I had to face the enemy that was considered an enemy in combat. Now, as a spiritual Abe and a faith believer in the Heavenly Father, I'm fighting the unseen enemy, the unseen force of the yin yang, the the battle between good and evil uh, in the front lines. Uh, that's what I'm fighting, and I'm showing uh, to the best of my ability pictures and videos. So people can awaken spiritually to understand that there is this unseen forces that are around us that sometimes we might be busy with life, but we have to prepare spiritually. Uh, we not just for ourselves, but for our loved ones, we have to prepare them also because if something will happen to us, the how is our next of kin going to be prepared to be able to fight spiritually or we're going to leave them on their own just without preparing them we have to prepare them now you know uh, that's why I make the videos that I make you know I always tell my son you know, if something ever happens to me look in YouTube on the spiritual encrypted encounters you're gonna see hear a lot of videos about me that's why I make these videos so he can know exactly what to do how to fight this unseen unseen, unseen war because you know, uh, we have to to be ready. I didn't want to make this video too long, but I, I, I thank for those that do view it. Uh, basically, what I was trying to say is I've been through a lot of things in my life. I've witnessed a lot of things. I never forget the things that I've gone through. And I use that as a weapon, a spiritual weapon in which... Sharing is caring. So when you experience something and you share it, somebody might be going through what you've been through and they hear what you've been through, how you overcame it. They're going to use that wisdom and knowledge to, to help them overcome whatever they're going through. That's why I make these videos. But anyways, brothers and sisters, there was just a quick live. I want you to know that... Uh, the God is with you. Uh, never give up if a bad thought comes into your mind yeah, that's how the unseen uh, forces work rebuke it, take authority over it rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name whether you see an accident or a bad image of something happening to somebody, rebuke it out of your mind, you know, uh, rebuke it and take authority over it and rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name that's one of the things that happens to me a lot you know, uh, images that try to come into my mind in that nature I rebuke them because I don't see as soon as I said that the light got dim here, the light got dim uh, in the in the room. I when I have, I see an Im, see I did it again. Uh, when I see an image that comes to my mind, I and it's is negative. I rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name because when something's being shown to you, if you don't rebuke it. It's kind of like you're wishing it. And that's what they do. You see, the, the disembodied demonic Nephilim, they can't, they don't have a body to be able to pray. Or they're not going to pray, but to wish bad upon. So they try to use us as the source to do their their wrongdoing. So every time I see a, a bad image of something, whether I'll give you some examples. Whether it's somebody getting in a car accident, whether it's an explosion, whether it's uh, 
somebody being demonized. You know, I see those images. I rebuke them in Jesus Christ's name. Even when I dream, if the dream has to do with anything like that, something negative, when I wake up, I rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name. And, and I put a stop to it. And that's what we're supposed to do when we're going through something is take authority over it. Not give it power by believing in what we're seeing, but rebuking it to prevent it to prevent it from what is being shown to us from happening. We have to rebuke it. But anyways, thank you all. There's somebody that's been here with me all this this live beat. Who is it here with me? This here with me right now. Give me a thumbs up to see to see who it is that's here with me. I know there's a, I've had a couple of guests here. I've had Eric, Sister Erica, Cousin Christina. Uh, have Mark Bridges. I don't know who's here with me right now. It's like I can't see. But y'all see when uh, I was talking about, about uh, when you see that image of something to rebuke it. And the light flickered, you know, I, I, said, I think I said it two times and it flickered, but I got my message that I wanted to send through. But that's all for right now, brothers and sisters. It was just a quick light video. Um, just just stay tuned and, you know, I'm going to continue to place pictures, you know, uh, on spiritual encrypted encounters and on the other sites I'm in. Uh, I would like to also, uh, I have a friend that's going to send me a specimen he found from, uh, I believe, Colorado. He lives in Colorado. He found a specimen. He, he, found, he knows that I'm a mineral collector. So he, he found a specimen, and he's going to send it to me. He's going to bless me with this the specimen he found, you know, which is a, a, a mineral. that he's, He said he's going to send it to me. So I, I'm looking forward to 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 be able to see that that specimen he showed he sent me a picture of it so when i do receive it i'll do a show and tell of it you know and i'm going to add that specimen to my display but thank well there's mark bridges uh but thank you all for tuning in god bless every one of y'all and your families uh and, and always remember to say i love you to your loved ones because not all uh, every day is promised. So remember to say I love you to your loved ones. Every, every chance you get. So they can know how it feels being loved. Tell them that you tell them daily. You know that you love them. Or you tell them have a blessed, blessed day. I love you. Because uh, love is very important at this time. At this time frame. And it's always been important. But. We got to let our loved ones know that we love them daily. Because like I said before, not every day is promised. You know, we can say, I love you today, but tomorrow when I be here, spirit, you know, when be, it's our time to go. So in saying that, love, light, and blessings to all of you all and your families. Peace.